Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes. Um, I'm coming to you from my home office, um, so I have a, some, a drape up uh, covering some of the, the clutter I've got in the background. Uh, so apologies for the very boring, bland, ugly background. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, one of our newest cameras. This is the G24 full format camera. This is our first full format camera that we've had um, well, that we've ever had, right? If you remember back in the old film days, that was 35 millimeter film. This is the same size chip in there as um, the old 35 millimeter film. Our, our next closest one uh, was the G26 that we launched not too long ago. The G26 was APS-C size, uh, and that's the consumer DSLR size, right? Uh, and before that, the G10, the G16, those were all uh, four-thirds format chips. So the, the CMOS chips have been getting bigger and bigger, and we finally reached the point where we've we've hit uh, full format again, and I'm really excited about that. The bigger the chip, the more field of view it has. So if you have the same telescope in front of it, and you're using a small chip, um, here's a here's an old G10. Um, and when I say an old G10, this is our one of our first versions. It's got the round window in there, which is totally fine for such a small chip. But when you get up to the bigger um, the bigger chips here, you're going to want a rec rectangle so it can grab the edges of the field of view. Pull this off, give you an idea of the difference in size here. Sorry, I'm, God, I'm wearing a black t-shirt, so this doesn't help. But there's a good idea of the size. So, yeah, there we go. You can see the border of both chips. Um, Four-thirds format, uh, full format, much bigger. The surface area is huge, and so your field of view is very big. Um, when you're talking about full format, there's some issues that, you've, that comes up with the telescope. So we'll get to those a little bit later. The uh, field curvature... Uh, and coma in a reflector, field curvature in a refractor, they both come into play when you're talking about a big format chip, so you might need some extra lenses to, to correct for that, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so the G26, um, there's a couple of nice features about it. Uh, first of all, full format, like I said, biggest field of view. Um, also, the full well capacity of the chip itself. This is the Sony, uh, the IMX410, um, and it's got 104,000 electron full well capacity. And what the heck does that mean? I'm not really going to get into the, the details of it, but uh, think of each pixel as a, a bucket, some sort of tall colander or tall tall cylinder, and it um, it collects not rainwater but photons. And as the photons start to uh, collect up, it goes from zero brightness, which is black, no photons in there, all the way up to full brightness, uh, and you would overexpose at that point. So the brightest star would be overexposed, and the faintest wispy uh, nebula is, is, is lower down at the bottom. With 104,000 full wall capacity, that's sort of the, the um, iterations in between. So you subdivide it all the way down, 104,000. And you've got this massive dynamic range from very faint black to very bright overexposed. So when you're talking about taking pictures of maybe the Orion Nebula, where there's faint wisps on the outside, but really bright sections on the inside, having that extra dynamic range that the, the Big Full Well gives you is, is, is quite nice. Um, also, when you boost the gain up, as a lot of people like to do, because uh, when you boost the gain of the camera, it... it it has the effect of increasing the sensitivity, though it really doesn't actually increase the sensitivity. It, it, it shrinks the full well capacity. So your exposure goes down. For the same brightness on the chip, it, it, you take a, a shorter exposure. Um, when you boost the gain, the full well goes down, so you lose some of that dynamic range. So having a big dynamic range to start with means you've got more wiggle room um, uh, to work with. So uh, it's not uncommon that you're going to be boosting the gain 10, 20, 30 percent up the slider. Um, to get fairly short exposures, and I'll show you a picture that I took a little bit later. It's um, it's got 5.94 uh, pixel size, so each pixel is uh, 5.94 microns. Uh, the G10 was 4.6. The G26 is like 3. Point something. So these fatter pixels actually are more sensitive. Um, they have a better chance of grabbing a photon as it passes through. So uh, that really helps keep the sensitivity up. It's it's over 80 percent quantum efficiency on this chip. Uh, some of the other ones might be 70% or maybe bordering on 80. So quite a nice sensitive chip. The uh, one the last thing I wanted to say about that size of the chip, full format is over twice the area of uh, the APS-C size chip. So I think it's almost like it's bordering on like two and a half times more area of uh, image that you get. So it, it's just, it's a huge chip. It's, it's so nice to have something like that um, on your telescope. Um, aside from that, it's got the full complement of standard features that our other blue uh, G-series cameras have. 
and then I just thought of something. This is not blue. It's going to be blue. I have actually a, uh, a model uh, that was a little bit pre-production, so we haven't painted it the right color yet. So it'll be our standard um, blue color like all of our other uh, larger format cameras. Um, it's got a USB 3 input, nice high fast uh, throughput speed. It's got a two port uh, USB 2 output, so you can hook up a guide camera right here, have it in there. Um, maybe a filter wheel if you're putting the Nautilus filter wheel in. This is a, if I didn't mention before, this is a, a one-shot color camera. This is a, a color camera. So usually you're not going to have a filter wheel in front, but I suppose you could. Let's say you wanted, you know, have it an open open hole uh, for uh, with no filter in there, and then you wanted to rotate into an imaging light pollution filter, depending on where you're located or, or what you're shooting. So uh, that could be handy. But but anything plugs in there. It's just a USB hub, basically. Um, on the front, so this has to be a much bigger window to not vignette the, the frame. So if you see this this hole, it's a 54 millimeter. That's much smaller. This is 54 millimeter um, threaded hole. It's a female uh, 0.75 uh, threads. The, the old uh, the G10 was a 42 millimeter, the standard standard T 42 millimeter thread. So 54 millimeter on the front. We include a uh, two inch nozzle that threads into the 54 millimeter. So this will slip. This will slip directly into any two inch focuser, and you're good to go. Um, now, what I mentioned at the beginning is um, with a big format like this, you have some problems with some different telescopes. The bigger the field of view, the more of the edges of the image of the telescope that you see. And a lot of telescopes have problems at the edge. So let's talk about that. Um, in a refractor, you have field curvature. And in a reflector, you've got uh, coma. So you need to correct for those. You don't maybe notice it with a uh, small chip, uh, four-thirds format chip like the uh, G10, but when your chip gets to be this big, you start to see more of the edges, and it looks really bad out there. If, uh, if you have a reflector like our 10-inch astrograph f3.9, um, the comb on the edge makes it look like the stars are little seagull shapes, and the very outside edges just don't look very good. You'd have to crop them. Uh, in a refractor, it's field curvature. That looks like, uh, like distorted stars away from the edges. So you're going to need a field flattener, for a refractor, or uh, just pretend this this is a field flattener for uh, one of our refractors, or um, just pretend this is a coma corrector if you have a reflector. Now, these field flattener or coma correctors have a standard um, thread on here. This is this happens to be a 48 millimeter T thread, 0.75 again. Um, but the coma correctors are optimized. There's my black T-shirt again. I'm sorry. They're optimized for the chip to sit 55 millimeters back from the front opening um, of the coma corrector or the field flattener. And if you have uh, a DSLR, you just thread on uh, your Nikon, your Canon T-ring, and then your DSLR, and bam, it's it's exactly 55 millimeters because that's how they were. That's how, what a DSLR is. It's always 55 millimeters back. Um, you have a camera like the G series. These chips are further forward in the. Um, in the uh, housing. So from the front opening here back to where the chip sits in this particular one, and actually I think in most of our big cameras, it's 17 and a half millimeters. So if I was to just stick with an adapter ring this on here, it would not be at 55 millimeters and the correction uh, wouldn't be correct. That's That sounds that sounds stupid. It's not the exact right correction, right? It, it needs to be exactly 55 millimeters for the proper correction, either for field flattening or for coma correcting. So we include some adapters. So in addition to the standard uh, two-inch nozzle, which also is threaded for our uh, two-inch filters, it's a 0.6 millimeter thread on the front, we also give you a couple of other adapters. Uh, this is a um, this is the 54 millimeter, um, sorry, this one, 54 millimeter down to 48 millimeter thread. I'm mixing them up. Here it is. So. This guy steps it down to 48 millimeter T. So, so this adapter is um, this adapter is 21 millimeters long, and it's 0.75 millimeter thread. Uh, then, and this also would fit into a two-inch nozzle. So, if you had a some sort of a filter from a different company that that used 0.75 millimeter threads, um, it would thread into that too, and you could slip this into the two-inch focuser. Um, I, I really have to hold this up high because if I put it right here, it disappears in my shirt. Uh, 
So 21 millimeters, and then we also include a uh, 48 millimeter T extension ring. This is 16 and a half millimeters. So if you thread that on, now 17 and a half millimeters plus the two, that's exactly 55 millimeters. So that means now I can thread on my coma corrector, or well, in this case, field flatter, field flatter, and now I know the field flatter is exactly the right distance back. 55 millimeters, it's going to perform optimally. So those are included with the camera. Uh, and then we also include, if you wanted it, this is a uh, 48 millimeter to 42 millimeter T step down. So all of these guys were uh, 54 millimeter down to 48 millimeter, uh, 0.75 millimeter thread pitch. This one gets you down to the standard uh, 42 millimeter T if you wanted it. And it threads into the front. And now this is going to thread onto any standard 42 millimeter T you might have on the back of your focuser. I, I don't recommend doing that because you know it's it's 48 or it's 54 millimeters back here down to 48 for a reason. It needs to be a big um, opening so it doesn't vignette or or crop out the edges of the field. At 42 millimeters, the edges are going to start looking dark. It's gonna it's gonna crop down um, and start vignetting. So. Try to get as wide open as you can. Use the 48 millimeter if possible. Um, but certainly, if you've got 42 millimeters, go ahead and use it. You'll need to take a flat field. You should do, be doing those anyways. But flat field, flat field calibration images can help um, correct for uh, darkening at the edges. Uh, it comes with an AC adapter uh, to plug in uh, right here. That's for the cooler. 30. Well, it's for the elect electronics as well. You need to have USB and the uh, 12 volt DC going. Uh, so it's an AC adapter that it comes with, but it's DC 12 volt. So as long as you, you plug in, um, you can run this directly off of a, a lithium battery if you wanted to. It just has to have a couple of amps. So I think we recommend uh, minimum three amps for this thing when it's, when it's going full. Um, it's not going to draw that much, but it's good to have overhead. So three plus amps going into this thing uh, from a 12 volt battery is what you need. Um, so the last thing I wanted to mention, so you need those field flatteners and coma correctors for reflectors or refractors. But if you've got one of those corrected designs, like our 190 Mac Newt, or one of the RC designs, um, uh, you, you don't actually need this because it's got a very large fully corrected circle. So um, in that case, uh, no, it's not necessary to get those um, coma corrector or field flatteners. Uh, the image that I took, that I, uh, I the, by the magic of uh, post-processing, uh, somebody other than me is going to put up here so you can see. This is of the Leo triplet. Um, it's NGC 65, NGC, uh, I'm sorry, M65, M66, and I always forget the NGC. It's uh, 3628. Um, that was taken on the 12-inch RC, the Truss 12. Um, and that's, that's the magic of full format right there because... Um, with a tr 12 truss at 2400 something millimeter focal length, usually these cameras are really tiny cropped in. But I noticed um, with this camera, I could get all three of them in, in one field of view. I couldn't do that with a G10. I'd have to take a picture of one of them or the other one. Or, um, but in this case, I, I grabbed them all. And they're kind of close to the edge, and the correction is really nice. So so the truss, the, the RC did not need a correction, and the 190 Mac Nude would also be quite a nice one for, uh, um, for a big format camera like this. But an, a 10 inch, um, astrograph of 3.9 would work awesome. Just get a coma corrector. Um, the refractor, the one, the the Eon refractors, uh, even the small ones, the the 80 millimeter uh, doublet, uh, uh, our our 80 millimeter ED would be beautiful with this. But definitely make sure you get a um, a field flattener for one of those. All right, I think I mentioned everything I wanted to about this. So this is the G24 full format color CMOS camera. All right, as always, thank you very much and clear skies. <laughs>